Imagine for a moment that you have a key. This isn't just any key. It doesn't open a door to a room or a chest full of treasure. This key starts an engine, not of a car or a plane, but of something far more wondrous. It powers a vessel capable of navigating the greatest ocean of all, the ocean of time. With a turn of this key, you could witness the birth of a star, sail past the age of dinosaurs, or visit the gleaming cities of a future we can only dream of. The universe, in its near-infinite expanse, is not just a collection of places, but a collection of moments. Time travel is the ultimate exploration, the grandest voyage, a journey to the when as much as the where. Are you ready to climb aboard our ship of the imagination and explore its currents? Think of time as a great flowing river. This river has a source, the Big Bang, where everything began. It flows onward, carrying all of us with it, through the present moment and toward an unknown future. We are all passengers on rafts, drifting downstream at the same speed. We can look back at the wake we've left behind. That's our memory of the past. We can see the water just ahead of us. That's our present. But we cannot paddle backward against the powerful current to revisit a place we've already passed. This one-way flow is what physicists call the arrow of time. It's a fundamental property of our universe as real as gravity. Why does this arrow point in only one direction? The answer lies in a concept called entropy. Entropy is, in simple terms, a measure of disorder or randomness. The universe tends to move from a state of order to a state of disorder. Think of an egg. It's a highly ordered system, with the yolk and the white neatly separated inside a shell. If you drop it, it shatters into a disordered mess on the floor. You will never see the puddle of egg spontaneously reassemble itself back into a perfect, unbroken egg. Now we arrive at the most famous and most troubling puzzle of time travel. It's called the Grandfather Paradox. The setup is simple, yet its implications are profound. Imagine you build a time machine. You decide to take it for a spin, traveling back 50 years into the past. You find your own grandfather back when he was a young man long before he ever met your grandmother. For some reason, perhaps it's an accident, or perhaps you're just a cosmic villain, you prevent him from meeting her. Maybe you distract him or cause him to miss the bus where they were fated to meet. If they never meet, they never get married. If they never get married, your parent is never born. And here's the knot. If your parent is never born, then you are never born. But if you were never born, how could you have possibly grown up? built a time machine, and traveled back in time to interfere with your grandfather in the first place. The very act that you committed in the past has erased the possibility of you ever committing it. It's a perfect contradiction, a causal loop that eats itself. Let's tell a story to see how this might play out. Meet Alex, a brilliant historian living in the year 2077. Alex has a singular obsession, the Lost Library of Alexandria, a treasure trove of ancient knowledge tragically destroyed by fire centuries ago. Using a newly invented, highly experimental time travel device, Alex decides to undertake the ultimate historical preservation project. The plan is simple. Travel back to the year 48 BCE, just before the fire, and rescue a few of the most important scrolls. Works by Aristotle, Euclid, and poets whose names are now lost to history. Alex materializes in the bustling, sun-drenched streets of ancient Alexandria. The air is thick with the smell of spices, the sea, and the parchment of countless scrolls. It's overwhelming, a dream come true. Carefully, Alex slips into the great library, a magnificent structure filled with scholars and the quiet rustle of turning pages. The goal is to be a ghost, to take a few items and leave without a trace preserving knowledge for the future without altering the past in any significant way. Alex identifies a few key scrolls, bundles them in a protective case, and prepares to make a swift exit, feeling the thrill of success. But history is not a museum exhibit, frozen behind glass. It's a living, breathing, chaotic thing. As Alex is leaving, a library guard becomes suspicious. A chase ensues. In the frantic escape, Alex bumps into a young scholar sending a stack of papyrus scrolls tumbling to the floor. One of the scrolls rolls under a shelf, unnoticed. Alex manages to get away, returning to 2077 with the priceless documents. The mission is a success, or so it seems.
This is an example of the butterfly effect, a concept from chaos theory. The idea is that a tiny, seemingly insignificant event like the flapping of a butterfly's wings in Brazil can set off a chain reaction that eventually leads to a massive, unpredictable outcome, like a tornado in Texas. In the river of time, Alex's small bump was the flap of a butterfly's wing. The scholar who quit his studies was the first gust of wind. His lost contribution meant that certain ideas were never shared, never built upon by subsequent generations of thinkers. The intellectual growth of humanity was ever so slightly stunted in one specific area. The consequences ripple outward, growing larger with each passing century. The missing mathematical proofs from that scholar meant that a key scientific revolution in the Renaissance happened 50 years later than it should have. This delay pushed back the Industrial Revolution. This, in turn, altered the course of political history in the 19th and 20th centuries. Alliances were different, wars were fought for different reasons, and some nations that were powerful in Alex's original timeline became minor players in this new one. The world of 2077 that Alex returned to was not the one that was left behind. It was a parallel world, a different version of the future. Alex's own existence is now a paradox. Alex was born in a world shaped by the original timeline, a world where the scholar made his great discovery. That world no longer exists. So, like the time traveler in the grandfather paradox, Alex has become an anomaly, a relic from a timeline that has been erased. So, if changing the past is so dangerous and logically fraught, maybe the universe simply doesn't allow it. This brings us to another fascinating idea, championed by the physicist Igor Dmitrievich Novikov. It's called the Novikov Self-Consistency Principle. In essence, this principle states that if time travel to the past is possible, then any event that occurs in the past must be self-consistent. This means that the universe has a law that prevents paradoxes from happening. You can travel to the past, but you cannot change it in any way that creates a contradiction. The timeline is not clay. It's a solid, unbreakable loop. Let's revisit the grandfather paradox through this lens. You travel back in time with the intention of stopping your grandfather. According to the self-consistency principle, you are doomed to fail, not by chance, but by the laws of physics. Your gun will jam. You will have a sudden change of heart. You'll discover you went to the wrong address, or, in a more mind-bending twist, perhaps your interference is what causes your grandparents to meet. Maybe in trying to push your grandfather out of the way of a bus, you inadvertently push him into the path of your grandmother, and that's how they met in the first place. You were always a part of that history. You just didn't know it. This principle transforms the time traveler from an agent of change into a participant in history. So far, we've been sailing on the ocean of imagination. But what does actual hard science have to say about this? Is time travel anything more than a fun thought experiment? The answer is a resounding maybe. According to Einstein's theory of general relativity, the one that gave us space-time and black holes, the equations do not explicitly forbid time travel to the past. As we mentioned, certain exotic solutions to these equations, like those involving wormholes or spinning cylinders of infinite length, could theoretically create these closed, time-like curves that loop back on themselves. It's mathematically plausible on paper. However, there's a huge gap between mathematically plausible and physically possible. These theoretical time machines require conditions that we have never observed in the universe and may not be able to create. For example, a stable wormhole, a tunnel through space-time, would likely require a bizarre form of matter known as exotic matter, with negative energy or negative pressure. We don't know if such matter can exist. If it can't, then these cosmic shortcuts might be impossible to build or sustain. The universe might have laws that protect causality by making the ingredients for a time machine physically unattainable. Furthermore, the world of the very small, governed by quantum mechanics, throws another wrench in the works. Some physicists, like the brilliant Stephen Hawking, were skeptical. He proposed what he called the chronology protection conjecture. So, where does that leave us? Time travel to the future is, in a way, already proven. Einstein showed that time passes more slowly for an object that is moving very fast. But traveling to the past is a different beast entirely. It remains firmly in the realm of the theoretical. 
a tantalizing possibility allowed by our current equations but potentially forbidden by physical realities we have yet to fully understand. The jury is still out. Let's set aside the physics for a moment and consider the human dimension. Suppose, just for a moment, that we did it. We built a working, safe time machine. What would we, as a species, do with such a power? The temptation would be immense. We could go back and prevent our worst mistakes. We could stop wars, prevent famines, avert catastrophic accidents, and save the lives of loved ones. The desire to correct the past, to heal old wounds, and to create a better world is a deeply noble one. Who wouldn't want to prevent a tragedy if they had the power to do so? But this power would be the ultimate Pandora's box. Who gets to decide what to change? Which version of better do we aim for? A change that benefits one nation might devastate another. Preventing one war might inadvertently lead to a worse one a century later. Saving one person's life might, through some unforeseen butterfly effect, lead to the deaths of thousands. The responsibility would be crushing and the potential for unintended consequences would be infinite. Every historical event, no matter how tragic, is a cornerstone for the events that follow. Removing a cornerstone, even with the best intentions, could bring the whole structure of our present crashing down around us. Maybe the inability to change what has come before is not a limitation, but a gift, a gift that forces us to look forward. We have journeyed through the river of time, wrestled with paradoxes, and considered the awesome responsibility of changing the past. We've seen how a single, well-intentioned act could unravel reality, and how the universe itself might have safeguards to protect its own story. And so, we end our journey where we began with a question. The ship of the imagination is yours now. The key is in your hand. The control panel is lit, and all of history, from the dawn of humanity to its final twilight, is available to you. You have one trip, one chance to visit any moment in the past. You know the risks, the paradoxes, the potential to unravel everything, but the temptation remains. What would you do? Would you be a silent observer, a ghost in the annals of history? Or would you try to change something? And if so, what event is so important that you would risk reality itself to alter it?